We have a, a pretty big match that we're covering this round okay. at uh, at six and two. Okay. So two people facing elimination here. Uh, I'm sorry. No, it's six and one. So oh, six and anyway, one. Okay. Eight, six and one. Not facing elimination. On your left <laughs> is someone who we won't get to right away. But okay. on your right. Is Cedric Phillips? Cedric Phillips, I know him. Lo- local, local, he star, moved, he PTQN moved boss. He's uh, the state champion for Washington. They, they get a look at him in his Seattle Mariners jersey. There He's he facing off against none other than Pro Tour Hall of Famer, Pro Tour Dark Ascension semifinalist John Finkel. There you go. Wow, get a look I just at John got Finkel. Like One I, of the <laughs> I, I, just I saw that the, beard. The all-time greats to ever play this game. One of the best limited players of all time. Definitely. One of the absolute best limited players of all yeah, time. Yeah, that man is my hero. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're here others. We're here in round eight of Grand Prix Seattle Tacoma. We're on GG's Live. I am Brian David Marshall. I'm here with Marshall Sutcliffe. And we're watching, should be a pretty exciting match of magic. Man, I'm pretty excited. <laughs> Get to cover John Finkel. Come on. Yeah. You've been doing this a while. I haven't. This is, uh, this is exciting for me. Cedric has a lot of respect uh, in the area for being a uh, very solid player. Um, he puts up good results pretty much every single time he plays um, and he definitely is going to bring his A game here against John Finkel so, so we look at two guys with, with one loss but like there are a number number of notable professionals who have two losses Okay, who are all in the Sam Black yeah. <laughs> right? they're all in the Sam Black most notably Sam Black Yeah, <laughs> but also with two losses Conley Woods okay. Brian Kibler uh-huh. Ben Stark Matthew Costa, wow. David Ochoa, Patrick Cox, Michael Jacob, Ben Sack, Reed Duke, Dave Williams, Jeff Cunningham, and Paul Rita. Oh, wow. have to win their last two oh, rounds today. if they want to make day two Jeez. and sit down at the draft table. That's a long list. That's a long list. Yeah. There's a lot of pro points in that paragraph. For sure. So we're, we're just underway here. Yeah, we're on our way. It looks like the first actual spell of the game so far is uh, Cedric playing out a lumber knot. And I think we're going to see a juggernaut here from uh, John Finkel. Yep. There it is. Galvanic juggernaut. Yep. Brian Westberg. Brian Westberg. To uh, Cedric Mulligan to start this game. He so. did. Brian Westberg. John kept his hand. All right, so it looks like uh, we've got three-color deck here already from Cedric. He's pulling over his options. And he's going to play a pitch for Bevels and just pass the turn back. So... Likely he's just going to be looking to trade the Pitchburn Devils for sure. the Juggernaut, and he's going to and get two, two counters, counters on his, yeah. on his uh, it seems like a, a reasonable turn. Now the thing though is is that uh, John Finkel in blue white is going to have a number of ways to get that Pitchburn Devils out of the way. Yeah, yeah. and he, I mean there's tons of things that he can do here. It looks like he's got Pretty a sure he's hunter <laughs> in his hand. He's got I think a silent departure. Um, maybe he has a moment of heroism here, or is he just going to go ahead and let the trade happen? Yep. Okay, he's just going to let it happen. He's like, okay. He just, go ahead. That's interesting. Let's see what happens. He's going to play a Havengul Rune Binder here. So this is the, this is a 2-2 that you can pay 2 and a blue, tap it, exile a creature from your graveyard, you get a 2-2 two, two zombie token and put a plus one, plus one counter on all zombies you control. Yeah. This guy just died, I think. Oh, he's reading it. He's no, no, reading no. it, yeah. Cedric was reading it, too. But uh, this is the kind of card that can grind out uh, this card, a the card's, game advantage yeah. very, very well. Uh, once you activate it twice, <laughs> yeah. you've got a 3-3 three, three and a 4-4 four, four plus him. Like it, Things get out of control quite quickly with that. And John's game plan seems to be to... Uh, to use the rune binder to its fullest here. So we should we should expect to see a rune binder activation this turn, I'm guessing. And it just costs three to activate it. Yeah, two and a blue. It's uh it's not cheap, but it's not your whole turn necessarily. Especially when you have uh, six mana in play. Fiend Hunter is going to come down here, and it's going to take out the wolf. So that'll relieve some of the pressure. Probably just pass the turn here and, yeah. and activate your rune binder. Yeah. 
right now he can make a token that can trade for the uh, lumber knot if that's the line that he wants to take. Uh, no, he can't actually do that because Cedric has the option of just sacrificing his Don Treader right. at any time and right, putting right. another counter on. So that play's not going to work. Hexproof. Pretty annoying. Tough mechanic to deal with. John is going to go ahead and activate here. And he's going to get a counter on that too. Uses money as a counter. Yep. And he's considering the double block. You get a good look at John. It's got to be intimidating. I don't think for Cedric. You don't think so? I don't know. I mean, Dude, Cedric just seems John like the Finkel. Cedric seems like the kind of guy who just like wants to get in there and wants to play against John. You're probably right. But it's John Finkel. Yeah, I mean he's pretty intimidating to play against. He's like, what? You block? Do you never block? Okay, so he did. Yeah, he double blocked. I think he just single blocked. No, no, no. He, I, I believe he double blocked. I think he put the Fiend Hunter in the way as well. But he, he only but got he the... he chose to kill the token yeah, he instead could. of the Fiend Hunter? Yeah, well, then if he kills the Fiend Hunter, then, it's more then John has another creature. He can make a second token and then have a 3-3 three, three and a 4-4 four, four creature. Okay. Right, which is just... But he plays... Is that a uh, Fester Hide Boar post-combat? Fester Hide Boar post-combat. It's yeah. two counters. So... Cedric's been able to uh, keep a fair amount of pressure. That is a screeching stop. So yeah. we're going to be milling two, which we can't quite see. Let's see if Rusty can help us figure out what cards just got milled. Let's see if any of them were creatures. Rusty can solve that mystery for us. Uh, the key thing being if there was a creature put in the yard here yeah. so that he can activate his having goal. Yeah, so it was a Stitch Drake and a Skillful Lunge. Stitch Drake and a Skillful Lunge? So he does have a creature. Okay. He's going to bounce the 5-5. Five five. It's worth noting, by the way, that the Screeching Scab is a zombie. Right. So, so that's going to get a token from the uh, from the Rune Binder. Very true. Seems relevant here. Yeah, and he'll be pretty happy to let that guy tussle, too. Yeah. Because, again, more food. Yeah. We saw some red from Cedric, you know, so we have to assume that he's uh, got some type of a burn spell. The Rune Binder's only a 2-2. Yeah. So it can die. Is that a uh, Pitchburn Devils? Or a, no, it's sorry, a Charmbreaker uh, Devils. Charmbreaker Devils, right. Uh, so what does he have in his yard? Is there anything that he can get back yet? I don't remember offhand. I don't think he's used any spells. It's we just get a... a just a uh, just a lumber knot in his yard here. Yep, and there's two creatures. Yep, so uh, John activated the move on our end step. He drew a swamp. Yeah, he's splashing black. So. Looks like there's an attack happening. If you're not getting anything back from the Charmbreaker Devils, they're kind of a 4-4 four, four for 6, which is not amazing. Spend five Attention back to players. This is the last call for the modern event at 9 o'clock. So, if you want to play yeah, spend five minutes in a flashback to bounce the 6 drop. And play a Stormbound game. That's the last call for the modern event. John is uh, using his mana very efficiently, <laughs> we can see. It's tapped out every turn. I'm always happy when I get to do that. You just feel bad any turn you didn't play your match usually, right? Yes. That's he's, what's so amazing about this format. He's a here, but it's actually benefited him. Yeah. Well, then, yeah, you draw something like a Grasp of Phantoms or... Mm -hmm. Yeah, Flashback helps yeah. facilitate that kind of a curve out. Just like it did last turn. Draw Forbidden Alchemy. Mm. <laughs> I love it, Forbidden Alchemy. Mm. <laughs> so 
Cedric's like, this stinks. This sucks. I tell you, it's really, I don't know if people fully appreciate how unusual it is for John Finkel to be here. He yeah, does he not go to New York City. He's in New York. He does not go to Grand Prix. Yeah. We're in Seattle. I mean, this yeah. is a, one of the furthest he's, ones he could go with in the States, right? He's, he's enjoying playing Magic right now. Oh, uh, you got to love that. It's great for the game when he does. Yeah. So, uh, Cedric's attacking with his uh, Don Shutter Elk. He's shipping he's, it in there. He's like, I want a 5-5 five, five, uh, boar. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to sack it anyway, right? Right. <laughs> John's taking a little extra time to think about blocking this 2 2. Okay, so John did block. Um, he blocked with the Fiend Hunter, and Cedric had what I, I can't see it on the screen, but I think it was Rangers, 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 Rangers Guile. Yeah. yeah. And he is going to go ahead and, and get the. Uh, it's an evolving wild. Yeah, and so he's going to get the Morbid as well. That was a nice sequence. Got a creature back and got a bigger one. Alright, so attacks are coming in. And he's got a 3-2 and a 3-3 that are coming in at the same time. And a 2-2 flyer. Right, and remember he can also activate the rune binder to pump both of his well. Now that he has the... Uh, now that he has... Jeez, that's a lot of counters. <laughs> he gets a 3 3 out of it. And John's going to pay 5 for a Farbog Bone Flinger. And he is going to finish, finish off. Finish it off, yeah. Yep. Great. Wow, another turn where look at his lands. And that's one of the things that John's so good about in Limited. It's not only just, it's not like a, a coincidence mm -hmm. that you happen to use all your mana no, effectively. No. Right? This is what we talk about when we talk about sequencing. Right. Right? Like, John sets up his turns. He, he makes his decisions. He's like, if I draw a land here, I can do this. If I do this, I can do this. And, like, makes just optimal plays on each of his turns. I like watching it. Yeah. Can't lie. And by the way, that far about Rune Flinger, Bone, Bone Flinger, Flinger. Yeah. Is that, he's a zombie. Is he really? I think so, man. I, I actually don't know if he is. I hope he's not, because then you can get him back with all types of crazy stuff. Yeah, he's a zombie. Of course he's a zombie. Lloyd Willett. He looks like a zombie. Lloyd Willett. You signed up for Bruce Jack number 14. So we know one of Cedric's cards. He's still got the Charmbreaker Devils in his hand. Lloyd Willett. Mr. And actually, I think he's just trying to figure out if he's dead here. He doesn't have any attacks. He can't leave up mana to pump his wolf. He needs to develop his board to put up more blockers. He's done that. And they're replaying Charmbreaker, but John is just going to jam a bunch of zombies in here. And uh... oh, that's so nice. gives him a zombie token. That's nice. Cedric needs to decide how to get the best value out of the trade here. He can, or out of the block. He'd like to block a token. Yeah, because he, if he blocks a 3 3, then he gets to eat it. Yeah. But he can also trade for that uh, 4 3 screeching scob if he wants. have the mana to pump, so this would just be a trade for the Bone Flinger. And he needs to chuck block the scum. 
Yeah. He gets to go get a land, and I think it's going to be a big consolation if he does. If he does this, he takes two, he takes four, and he goes to four. He gets to keep his wolf back so that he can activate it next turn. Yeah. Potentially trade up for a token or for. And he's going to get. I mean, he's going to get a uh, at least a ranger's dial back off of his yes. charm breaker doubles. Good point. You know, and suddenly if he and he can always if he has two sorceries or something, he yeah, can yeah. Get him for he could steal a game. Yeah, it happens. So he did get the ranger style and he drew a mountain. Trying to figure out, can I can I get this win? Is it is it here? It's a really tough spot. Oh, there's a haste maybe it picture. is. <laughs> Left himself mana up to pump the wolf and have um, Ranger's Style up too. The problem is, is that the he's, problem is he's he into can't, the yeah. crack back. He, he yep. cannot. Yep. Yep. He needs, he needs to muster every single creature he can. He does. To not die. He's at four. He's still just hoping to find a way to answer the rune binder so he can take back control. Because hey, look at his board. Yeah. You'd be pretty happy if you yeah. had Falker Math Marauders. All right. Well, he's also at that upkeep step where he can be like, you know, he can also be like, boom, boom, with the Ranger's Guile twice. And then maybe draw an instant or sorcery. Yeah. What about, what if he drew uh, Wild Hunger? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's the kind of card that can actually get him through. Play it, flash it back. It makes the... How big, is, how, would, how big would that make the Charm Breaker go? It's five per... It be, oh, oh, no, oh, it's seven. It would be a 17-12. You just made that up. I did. <laughs> so I think it would be enough to kill it. I mean, it's seven per. <laughs> so he attacks you two in the air. Gets so, in with the Screeching Scob. It's actually 18. You were close. The Scob's got three toughness right now. Does it or does it have more than that? I don't know how many counters are I see two counters. Yeah, that sounds right. So he could potentially... do that and then pump it. Sure. John has a response... He has a Ranger's Guile. He's going to Ranger's Guile his Marauders to keep it alive. Yep. He knows he's going to get the card back anyway. Right. John gets a 3-3 three, three Undying back. Yep, so that isn't going to help with the Rune Binder. And there's the a Doom, Doom Traveler. Traveler. Yeah, so yeah. Doom Traveler looks pretty good versus the uh, Charm Breaker Devils just because Yeah. he is going to need something to give an evasion to get through. Cedric's got a Ranger's Guile and the card he drew for his turn in yeah. his hand. Yeah, yeah. Look, lining up some mana so he drew something. Yeah. I mean, seriously, Wild Hunger here? Yeah. Get you? It's a lot of damage. All right, uh -huh. so Hanwar Watchkeep. It did cost three. You got to figure Cedric Swamp is probably for uh, flashing back Fires of Undeath or something. Sure. Which he wishes he had at every stage of this game. John's flooding. He's been flooding the whole game. He's just had a lot of good things to do with his mana. Sure. Now he doesn't. But he's got a, a fine board state here. Just sends in the Stormbound, guys. That's it. Says, you know, I will trade for your guy and... Get Ranger's another. Guile, yep, that's creature. exactly what happened. And get a creature now I get a zombie back. All right. I get to make my guys big. So he's trying to set up the victory next sure. turn. So Cedric probably... No, nope. no, nope. nope. yeah, nope. nope. that's played, not how werewolves work. Cedric played his spell. Probably yeah. needs to draw something very impacting here to win the game, and he didn't. Huh. It was an interesting match because John 
played that end of the spectrum that we were talking about, the grindy kind of, and he, he really committed to that. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, that's how he plays it all the time. Oh, is it? Yeah, he's just a very deliberate player. He looks for lots of card advantage. And, okay. You know, really just, you know, I, he, he really feels like there's a correct way to play. Right? He finds that optimal mm-hmm. path through the, through the, through the rocky uh, waters. He's the one that was accredited with the, the statement that there's, like, the right play and everything else is wrong. Yeah, yeah, something yeah. Like that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sideboarding here. You see a fire is a, Oh, does John have another deck? He's got a bunch of card sleeve up there. So he might. He could just go into a whole other color. Doesn't look like he's going to though. Yeah, looking at John's red. I mean, he's got. Is his red good? He's got some. He's got some fine cards. Well, then it, it would make some sense then. But he had a full red backup plan. Yeah, it's got some perfectly reasonable red cards that you could be splashing even, but uh-huh. and you're splashing black instead. Which deck do you think is favored in this matchup? Center deck doesn't seem that fast. I don't. I haven't really. Let me let me take a look at what he's doing here. I, mean, I think we got a pretty good idea what John's trying to do, but we. I mean, we saw a lot of Cedric's cards, but. He wasn't applying a ton of pressure earlier. Yeah, I mean, he mulliganed. He didn't have a good... good. His, his deck looks... It, it looks very good to me. Yeah. I mean, those rares were pretty nice. I'm a big fan of the uh, Hammer Watch heat. Looks like he does have a prey upon. So you can get that prey upon lock going with Trumbreaker Devils. Oh, yeah. That's so exciting. It is nice. Especially against John's deck. I mean, he's not likely to have something that has four power. No. Maybe the the scobs or something. The relentless ones. So Cedric, I'm assuming, is going to be on the play here. He is. He's going to lead with the forest. Standard opener for John as well. Not a very, yeah, I mean, unusual that we, we haven't seen a lot of. Oh, there's... He has a more typical, your buddy. more typical uh, play. Yes. Is this going to be the watch keep this? No, village is best mm. So now we've seen two pretty solid werewolves from Cedric. The moon mist question starts to creep up. He just attack. He just sent him in. Yep. <laughs> Looks like he had it. It's, it's kind of bluffing is the type of thing that... Uh, well, it's kind of such a weird situation. It's a werewolf because you can't really bluff because then it's like if you say go, that thing's going to flip around Which he just now. Did. Yep. But Cedric's forced to take the damage. There's just too many tricks in white that are going to yep. get him. But this is a this is a spot where Cedric yeah, he decides just to ship it in. Um, you know, rebuke is a card that that you could see here pretty often. Yeah. Forbidden alchemy for John. Okay. Yeah, forbidden alchemy. Man, I love forbidden alchemy, and I would be. It seems like a guy like John <laughs> probably get a lot of uh, value out of it for now. <laughs> you know, it just, it just feels like he's going to make the wrong decision uh, not that often. See that juggernaut back I, again. I've only seen him make one incorrect decision ever. You might know what you're talking about. I just saw a guy wearing a shirt that referenced. Did you really? Yeah. I think he's, reaction to it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think he, he's, so we, we do drafts back in New York. You know, we use uh, avatar cards for people to determine seating and pairings and stuff like that. So for a long time, John's avatar was Kai Bude, right? his player card. It's it's no longer Kai. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wolf token. Oh, it's a wolf token. <laughs> yeah. So it's, yeah. <laughs> Poor John. Yeah, those Doesn't words have never. Much magic. Those words have not been uttered together. <laughs> Fair enough. Very often, or ever, Still, very like, accurately. Oh, he doesn't play that often. He plays I, a lot. He plays more magic than most people. He okay. drafts online all the time. Okay. He plays. He has live drafts like at more than most people in the world. Fair enough. Yeah, 
always just view the Pro Tour prep as this other level. And I he, he, a lot. He, spent a, he spent a ton of time pre- preparing for Honolulu. I mean, he was yeah, out there he was, early. He was committed to it. And he's here. Yeah. He seemed a little chagrined about it. It's like, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My name is John, and I love magic. Yeah, he knows yeah. it. <laughs> so Cedric uh, just passed the turn back. Uh, uh, he, that way we'll flip back down, right? That's how they work. That's not how that works. So uh, looks like they're both attacking. Is that? Yeah, man. Why? Send them. What what trick did he have? Oh, he just wants stuff in the yard. Is that what's going he on? He might just want stuff in the yard, right? I mean, he gets it back. He gets it back, and then maybe he has. And like then he a, untaps his, and then he gets to untap his juggernaut. Yeah. Like, do you want to block it? That's fine. Then I'll have an untapped juggernaut. I yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Turn. Plus, uh, if, if he does block it, then he's taking five. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I'm sure that John's okay with taking five, getting the guy back, and maybe even playing like a stitch oh, strike here or something. Yeah. And Cedric yeah. certainly can just take it. I mean, I think Cedric just has to take it, honestly. Really? I mean, he can't just keep doing that, yeah. though. Yeah, he, he, puts it in front of, he puts it in front. Yeah, I think he just kind of has to. I mean, if John has a trick, he's got a trick. He does. He's got skillful lunge. So that's going to one for one for the Howl Pack if, if uh, Cedric doesn't have anything to respond. Puts the uh, Juggernaut up to seven, though, so even a Ranger Skyle is not going to save nice. or trade. Or Howl of the Wolf Pack. Howl of the Wolf Pack. What is that? Oh, wasn't that plus one, plus one counter? Hunger of the Howl Pack. Oh, that one, the one drop. Oh, there's a Fires of Undeath. What did he play it on? Uh, John played... What creature did John just play there? Was it the Runebinder? Maybe I just... I missed it. Oh, no, there's a Runebinder now. And John played either Lingering Souls. Yeah, he, it has to be a Lingering Souls. He, so he tapped out four mana to play the Rune Binder and then three mana to play something that right. made two tokens. So, Oh, no, it's only two. So that's probably just the Gather the Towns folk. Sure. Yeah. And Cedric plays a Pitch Burn Devil. Okay. No, that's, that's on the table. Yeah. going to ship just those guys. Yeah, because Cedric can't... It, the Pitchburn Devils won't die to any of this attack. So his Moonbinder is safe. This is a tough spot. So I, I, I got a glimpse of Cedric's hand and I saw that he has the Marauders again. And, you know, he really wants to be the aggressor in this spot and yeah. he's just not... 2-2 two, two flyer for 5 is not as cool as... You get to swing with it. Looks like he's ended his turn. Yep. Once you put that, uh, that yeah. unhallowed Cathar in play, that's the end of your, your turn. Your turn's done. That does not come back right away. No, I've seen people do that. Cedric has a grip here, though. I see a Strangaroot Geist in his hand. Again, he's got a lot of hasty guys that want to kind of get in there, but Strangaroot Geist blocks. Juggernaut's going to be forced to attack next turn, so he will get to uh, get the Pitchburn Devils active. And he's just going to scoop it up. Setters to five. Yeah. Yeah. Well, John just smashed him. He kind of beat him pretty good there. Sure. He very casually signs his slip. Yeah. Doesn't look too worried. He's played so many of these tournaments. He's in playing tournament. I mean, he played in the first pro tournament. Did he really? Yeah, in the junior division. Oh, okay. 